Hi folks, so here is my second of the three videos that I talked about yesterday. Yesterday we talked about Jupiter's transit through Taurus, but particularly with an emphasis on Jupiter being retrograde between September 4th and December 31st. Today I want to talk about Venus's transit through Virgo. And then tomorrow I will put out a video related to the Libra new moon solar eclipse. Now, there are a couple of things I want to address as far as the sign of Virgo itself is concerned. First and foremost, we are still, until the new moon solar eclipse happens within 72 hours at this point in time, we are still in a Virgo lunar cycle. The last new moon was in the sign of Virgo. At present, as I do this video, the moon is in Virgo again. Now, when over the course of a 28 day cycle, a new moon goes from typically a new moon in one sign and then a new moon to another sign, before it enters the next sign where it's going to do the next new moon, it naturally transits the sign where the new moon first occurred. For example, we had the new moon in Virgo on September 14th. On October 14th, we're going to have the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. And at present, October 11th when I record this, but October 10th, 11th, and for part of the 12th Pacific time, the moon will go through Virgo on its way into Libra on October the 12th and then making the new moon solar eclipse on October 14th. When the moon goes through the sign of its current new moon cycle, we experience a kind of closure of that lunar cycle, for lack of a better word. You may find that you are pursuing tasks. So wherever Virgo sits in your chart, what house it occupies, what that house stands for, what you think that this lunar cycle has been about, you might be feeling 12th housey about, uh, and this is this that will really make more sense to more astrology aficionados about this particular new moon cycle. I've mentioned to you lots of times before, as we head towards the new moon and the moon is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, our own energy becomes more depleted and depressed. The moon represents our emotional and intuitive energy. And by this point in time, the new moon happens 14 days later, a full moon happens. And another 14 days later, the next new moon happens. And as we head to the second 14 day span and the few days, the 48 to 72 hours before a new moon, the closer and closer we get to that new moon, you may feel really flat and a little bit like walking through treacle or pulling teeth or, you know, now depending on where, what is going on with the chart, with the chart, where these signs sit, um, what other transits are taking place. You could either be busy or not busy, but your emotional and energetic capacity to deal with and handle things, um, it's a shorter fuse and it's a more exhausted feeling. So even though you're going to execute over the next 72 hours as the moon gets smaller and smaller and smaller and then disappears and then creates the new moon and then slowly starts to become bigger and bigger and bigger, it's after the new moon now that we're gonna get some of this energy back. So as you head towards it, just be aware that two things are happening. While the moon is in Virgo, for another day and a half for me or so, you know, for Pacific time or for all of us as I'm recording this, um, Topics, issues related to the last new moon may be relevant energetically or we may be dealing with them or communicating about them or they might be top of mind. Um, but also this time period may sort of have this feeling of kind of needing to release this last new moon cycle. And that's what I mean by it being 12th housey and feeling like you want to rest and feeling like you want to stare into space and feeling like you need to restore. Feeling maybe not quite as social, more introverted. Um, that could very much be part of the immediate current uh, energetic climate. Plus, as I said, it's the week before the eclipse and eclipse, it's, it's hard not to be affected by things as they're playing out on a global sphere. And if you know people who are really invested in the politics of a particular region, and we all are more or less invested in, you know, whatever it is that carries greater emotional resonance to us, but we now know a lot of people of different faiths and across the planet, it's hard not to be affected by. Um, uh, uh, 
um, sorrow and anger and frustration and hurt and horror um, and and just it's 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 clearly been a terrible week um, so 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 there's a lot to kind of take in and process energetically and we might a lot we might just a lot feel like our cups are full and we are tired and the moon becoming smaller and smaller is not going to help with that and you may very well find as i said that the energy that you would normally have and the vim and the vigor and the pizzazz is just lacking over the next 72 hours okay so that's the first thing since we're talking about the sign of virgo and the moon is in virgo and we are closing out the last lunar cycle i wanted to get that out there now venus came into Virgo on October the 9th, a couple of days ago. Venus had spent about four months in Leo because that is where she was retrograde between July 23rd and September the 4th. Venus went direct while she was retrograde. As we've discussed multiple times, she trined Chiron three times, but she squared Chiron and Aries. She squared Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus three times, and she trined the North Node in Aries twice. Now she walks into, sails into direct, into Virgo, where till recently, the Sun, Mercury, Mars were transiting. And again, we are still, as far as I am concerned, we are still in Virgo season until the 14th because we're still under the new moon in Virgo's influence or cycle. I know Virgo season and Libra season conventionally are referred to when the Sun is in a particular sign, but 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 the sign of Virgo still has a certain amount of action. When you have transits of the personal planets through a particular sign, typically the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and at some point while the Sun is transiting, a new moon occurs. All these events happen relatively close to each other. And every year, these planets transit in a different sequence depending on how close they are to the Sun. Now, some years, and at some times, like right now, when Mars is also close to the Sun and getting closer and closer, then Mars also plays a role in the way the energies associated with a particular sign and the way the personal planets transit that sign, just quite how, on an annual basis, they roll. So if Mars is the first planet in, which it is currently, followed by the Sun or Mercury, and then followed by Venus, which is roughly the way it is occurring right now, then it might imply that with Mars's entry into the sign first, a certain amount of action and energy um, and pursuit of goals and conflict first occurs in that part of the chart. With the sun's entry next, we go through sort of an internal illumination, an internal review of that part of the chart. With the new moon occurring is when action related to that part of the chart really gets going. Mercury coming in, uh, then... Uh, means that there's a greater intensity or greater intensification with regard to communication and, 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 and transactions. And then Venus coming in at the end may have the tendency to finally deliver manifestations and outcomes with all this energy that has been occurring. Venus is typically a planet of blessings. Now, Venus is notoriously unhappy or uncomfortable in the sign of Virgo. Virgo is a meticulous, um, data-driven sign, um, needs the proof, anxious sign, uh, ruled by Mercury, mentally anxious, mentally agile, mentally needing to see, touch, feel, taste, test, um, concretize everything. And Venus is the feminine principle of flow and instinct and letting things happen and knowing when to receive and knowing when to give. And it's an unquantifiable um, energy. It is an energy of bounty and it is an energy of, it's not an energy of precise calculation. That said, whatever house Venus is gonna go through in greater or lesser degree, she will, in my experience, bless that part of the house. Chances are now the Virgo part of the chart that we're still in the new moon under, but just for another three days. But Venus is going to be in Virgo till November the 8th. 
the Virgo part of the chart now stands to after everything if you are looking for results in the Virgo part of your chart or greater forward movement. You may find that you're still, there are a couple of areas of activity that are still related to Virgo. The new moon in Virgo is still active till the 14th, just for a few more days. But the Mercury cycle that happened when Mercury was retrograde, remember Mercury was retrograde in Virgo between August 23rd and September 15th. When Mercury was retrograde in Virgo, it conjuncted the sun and created a new Mercury cycle that's going to take us through uh, December, December, January. So this Mercury cycle continues. So we may till December and especially till October the 20th when Mercury is going to conjunct the sun again. We may be very active, uh, thinking, doing, performing, transacting, communicating, putting plans into practice, um, contracting uh, in the Virgo part of our chart. The nice thing is that with Venus's entry, there's now greater room till the 8th of November for things to come through, for there to be financial opportunities, financial blessings, financial relief, financial gains, relationship blessings, relationship gains. Those are the two things that I look at and look for, and Venus is now direct. The other thing with all these transits that have occurred in the sign of Virgo, since Mars entered Virgo and then the Sun and the new Moon and Mercury, and actually I think it was Mars and then Mercury and then the Sun because Mercury went retrograde and that's exactly what it was. Mars, Mercury, the Sun, then the new Moon occurring and now Venus. All these planets trined Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus supporting as we discussed yesterday there's a reason why i did these videos in sequence remember that we've been talking about jupiter creating a new ending a 12 13 year cycle creating an auspicious beginning in the sign of taurus where does taurus sit in your chart what house does it occupy what does that house stand for jupiter is retrograde so we are in um preparing for this ending a new beginning to be really completed between January and May of next year. But we've already had a first push between May and September of this year. But irrespective, the planets as they transit through Virgo support both the new beginnings that Jupiter is trying to create in Taurus and the authenticity of expression and being uh, that Uranus is trying to create in Taurus. Plus, we have the last of the eclipses. We've had the eclipses in the sign of Taurus as well on October 28th. So, lovely to have the planet of, one of the planets of luck, day-to-day -day luck, bounty, blessings, opportunity, assistance, smoothing things in a part of a chart now that has really been and will continue to, till December, have a certain amount of energy and action and activity. Um, if you were to say, what are the top three priorities for anyone right now? I would say assisting Pluto in closing out its transit in Capricorn. I would say paying attention to where the eclipses are and aligning with them, aligning with the Taurus and Aries developments. Uh, where does Taurus and Aries sit in your chart? What house do they occupy? What do they stand for? Aligning with developments. That's the direction where you need to move in. And third, looking at where the Mercury cycle is and continue to think about and implement and communicate and transact and sales and interviews and resumes and mercurial things, communication, cognition, technology, social media, uh, chatter, um, continuing to be communicating and transacting relating to the Virgo part of the chart. Venus's entry till November 9th, as I've said now a few times, and you know I keep repeating myself in my videos so that the message really comes through, will create blessings and opportunities and manifestations as a result of all this work that is going to continue with the Mercury cycle. And whatever these opportunities are, because these are the last of the personal planet trines to Jupiter and Uranus, there's potentially opportunity that will continue to lead you to whatever this direction is that has been overshadowing all the transformation 
That has been occurring in the second half of 2023 and promises to continue into May 2024. Well, that's nice. That's the best of what Venus can do. More opportunities coming in potentially, more to move us in the new direction or the right direction. The Virgo part of the chart, the Capricorn part of the chart, the Taurus part of the chart have been in some sort of harmonious communication since November of last year. And so a lot of these 2023 20 energies, the second half of 2023, as tortured as the process has been, as I mentioned yesterday, three steps forward, two steps back. These lunations are forward looking and have opportunity, but we have Venus and Mercury retrograde. Well, Venus goes direct, then Jupiter goes retrograde. Mercury is now direct. But, you know, but then we have a new moon cycle with the Virgo that is ruled and disposited by a stationary Mercury. Nice to have Venus come through, and insofar as we've needed some sort of a light to follow, some sort of a direction with regard to where it is that we're trying to create and manifest change, a kind of change that feels instinctively right to us with regard to the direction we want to move in, then Venus, when she trines Jupiter on October 22nd and Uranus on October 31st, will likely bring in creative or relationship or financial opportunities to support the Taurus part of the chart and creating the changes related to the Taurus and Aries part of the chart where the eclipse is appointing. And it's interesting to me that the three priorities with these bigger transits are all in the earth signs that are supporting each other. You know, Venus, as it clears Virgo, as it heads towards the it will try in Pluto. And all the Sun is trying Pluto from Virgo, and Mars is trying Pluto and Capricorn from Virgo, and Mercury trying Pluto from Capricorn and Virgo, and Venus will too as she heads towards November the 8th. So the planets in Virgo, Pluto, uh, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus, the top three priorities being Pluto and Capricorn as a transit, the eclipses in Taurus and Aries, and these transits in Virgo with regard to being this kind of trine, this triangle of opportunity. Now, there is a fly in the ointment, and you've all felt this fly in the ointment by now, I have no doubt, because while Venus creates these trines to the Earth signs, what any planet that has been transiting Virgo has had to deal with is opposing, being finding itself opposite Saturn and then Neptune and Pisces. Now, luckily, Venus supposing Saturn is already done. Saturn has been retrograding in Pisces and is now in the first couple of degrees. So when Venus entered Virgo on October the 9th, bam, she ran right into an opposition with Saturn. So if from a financial and relationship perspective over the last 72 hours, last four or five days, you have felt like you have felt a Saturnian ice cold grip, a uh, stop a stare down between Saturn and Venus, then you would not be you would not be mistaken. There could have been, as Venus entered Virgo, a strong note of responsibility, fiscal responsibility, austerity, finances being restricted in some way, relationship issues. When a planet is opposition, the faster moving planet is asked to serve the purpose of the slower moving planet. So Venus in Virgo, Venus coming into Virgo to create opportunities after all these transits, Saturn may say, I'm going to stop you at the gate so that you're clear as you head towards November 8th about what your responsibilities are towards the Pisces part of the chart. As we've discussed before, Pisces has been a sign, and so where Pisces sits in your chart, what house it occupies, where there has been a crisis looming since 2015, 14, 15, 16, loss, perhaps deception, gaslighty things that we've had to deal with, and Saturn's entry since March, I frankly welcome because Saturn is forcing us to deal with this part of the chart and get our act together and finally be, you know, be like, it's time to stop being stupefied at the drain or the deception or the fogginess or the lack of clarity or feeling like you're fighting phantoms, whether they're real or not, or, you know, all those kinds of Neptunian hazy 
um, dramatic inspired shadow on the wall things that Neptune, murky waters thing that Neptune does so well. Saturn's presence in Pisces for the next couple of years and moving towards Saturn conjuncting Neptune and the North Node over the next couple of years is all pointing to us really getting serious about and being in a place of action, greater taking, taking greater responsibility for healing and managing this loss and leaking and deception perhaps for a number of us in the Pisces part of the chart. And Venus coming in, ready to smooth things over and act like a bomb or a break for us, goes bam, right into Saturn. It's hard not to think of what is going on in the Middle East. Venus, a planet of peace, stopped cold. <sighs> By Saturn, a planet of cause and effect. And Saturn is not a planet I associate with 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 Mars like aggression, but we'll we'll contend with that. We'll contend with that as time goes on. On a personal front, the opposition to Saturn with all these planets, and you can you can check online if you want to see when it was that Mars opposed Saturn and Mercury opposed Saturn and the Sun opposed Saturn and as I said Venus opposed Saturn October 9th, you're welcome to do so. I think what's more important and relevant right now is to say that if you have felt over the past five or seven days a certain amount of feeling like that part of the chart that, again, with Jupiter retrograde is pronounced, would present finally some flow and some results in the Virgo part of the chart, you may find that you're still having to exert a certain amount of effort, probably Mercury-related effort, new moon type of effort in the Virgo part of the chart, and the results aren't quite here yet. Well. Venus has cleared the opposition with Saturn. So slowly, it wouldn't surprise me if you're waiting for creative pursuits, but especially financial droppings from heaven. I was going to say gains and windfalls, but that sounds very big and very dramatic. Even just flow as a consequence of all this activity in the sign of Virgo. Relationship ease whatever that would mean to the Virgo part of your chart, then I suspect that we're going to start to see more. Of, we may already have started to see more and more of that, but that will accelerate and that will grow. There's one important opposition that is going to be coming up that you really need to keep your eye out on, and that is on November the 3rd when Venus opposes Neptune. Out of these oppositions, the opposition to Saturn and the opposition to Neptune, is the opposition to Neptune where, interestingly, the stakes are higher. Now, Venus as she trines Jupiter and Uranus, and in particular that Venus trine Uranus. Venus trines Uranus on October 31st. So as we head to that new moon lunar eclipse on October the 28th, it'll be nice to have. It's a Taurus eclipse. It's a Taurus full moon. It'll be nice to have Venus from Virgo trining Uranus in Taurus. So, so as we head towards the 28th, and indeed the 31st. Now, Venus should be providing more flow and more blessings in the sign of Virgo and supporting the Taurus part of our chart more and more as we head towards October 22nd and 31st. But then as we head towards November the 3rd, and I would start to be on the lookout for this after that eclipse, after the 31st, give it about, let's just say October 30th, so onwards, you may really, and this has been a theme throughout Neptune's fogginess. If you feel like you've had to deal with some sort of counterbalance between forward movement and opportunity and excitement and a sense of direction with regard to where to create the new beginnings, where to go, where's the transformation leading to, but also keep an eye out for influences that are somehow murky and deceptive and have been causing a drain in the Pisces part of the chart. So, I am going to be trining with Pluto and Capricorn and trining with all the planets in Taurus. And I, as one of the planets transiting Virgo, I'm going to gallop forward even in the middle of these Venus and Mercury retrogrades and create a sense of opportunity and optimism and forward movement. We had the new moon in Leo that trined the North Node in the middle of August. So, you know, 
Yeah, there were retrogrades, but we were also moving forward. But during that time, this entire time that we've had these planets go through, um, go through Virgo, we've had them oppose Saturn. Sober, what do you need? What was the Venus retrograde about? What do you need? What do you need in terms of resources?